Over the past couple of years, first there was you know, 30 years of debate. Does amyloid cause the disease? And the evidence against it where we put Alzheimer genes, like the ones we discovered, the amyloid gene, APP, the presenilins we discovered back in the 80s and 90s. We put those in mice, they make amyloid, they didn't get the rest of the disease, they didn't get the tangles. If the mouse lives long enough, there's some inflammation, there's some cell death, they get cognitive issues, but it wasn't Alzheimer's. So that said, well, you put amyloid in the mouse, they didn't get tangles, see, it doesn't cause the disease. Well, it's a mouse, but, you know, fine. Then you saw amyloid trials fail. See, Wall Street Journal. Everybody's full of crap, it's not amyloid. Well, again, now we know that the trials fail the hypothesis. Amyloid starting 15 years before symptoms. You can't treat when they already have the disease. But the coup de grace, there were two things. One was that decode genetics came up with a mutation that protected against Alzheimer's in the Icelandic population. And what did it do? It prevented the formation of amyloid. So that was, that was in favor of amyloid. Then we had our study last year in Nature, what New York Times dubbed Alzheimer's in a dish. Basically, we took human stem cells, we made human neurons, but the important thing was to grow them in a gel that mimicked the brain. Previously, we used liquid. Big revelation, the brain's not made of liquid. <laughs> Let's do it in gel. And sure enough, when you have human neurons making amyloid in a gel, in a dish, in, after six weeks, you see plaques, great. Wait two more weeks, you see tangles. No genetic manipulations to get those tangles. Endogenous tau protein from the neurons made tangles, but it had to be in human neurons in a gel. And now what we couldn't do in a mouse for 20 years happens in eight weeks in a dish. And I think that, more than anything, convinced people that here's the data that says incontrovertibly, amyloid can cause tangles directly. It's not It's not even a cascade. The reigning hypothesis was the amyloid cascade hypothesis. Well, the first amyloid hypothesis came from George Glenner, 1984. He discovered what the amyloid was made of. He just said, Alzheimer's is the most common, he said commonest, I don't know if that's a word, but his title was, Alzheimer's is the commonest amyloidosis in human. And said, it's this amyloid directly causing the tangles. He was right, you don't need you know, in the amyloid cascade hypothesis that came later, they said, oh, there's amyloid, and then 10 different things go wrong in the brain, and now the nerve cells in its deathbed, and its last little suicide note is a tangle, the signature of a dying neuron. No. What the amyloid in a dish says is, put neurons in a dish, have them make amyloid, direct signaling pathway, you get tangles. Amyloid to tangles, just like Glenner said in 1984. He was right. So that tells us now that you can get tangles not just from head bangs or um, traumatic brain injury, but directly from amyloid. But amyloid takes decades to do what maybe a few concussions will do over a 10-year period.